also referred to as edit checks and guys I actually prefer you to use edit checks here because interchangeable with application controls is program controls or programmed controls which are controls programmed within the system so your computer controls but program checks are just these specific type of computer controls so often a question will say to you what are the program controls and then you are supposed to discuss all that are available but you then might limit it just to these because you see the word program so that's why I say to you rather look at these as edits and, and often your, your questions will say edit checks because then you know it's just this list. Whereas when you're looking at programmed, you're looking at everything. So don't ignore the rest. Okay, so these help with assistance of errors. So therefore these are there to ensure the accuracy of the data. Once again, as I see one, I'm going to quickly show it to you so that we can make the connection between them. So, size checks, make sure that when you are putting in a specific number that you have to put in the right number of digits. So an example is maybe a customer number. Their program is set up that each customer number will have three letters from the customer's name followed by three digits. So then I need to make sure that the field has six items in it. If you put less or more, it's not going to allow you. Unfortunately, our Sage doesn't have a set number of digits for our customer numbers, so we can't actually show you that. But guys, an example would be, and I'll show it to you on the invoice when we get to our next one, is if I wanted to put a postal code. In South Africa, our postal codes are four digits. So if I wanted to put 10 digits, it won't let me carry on past four. And if I try to save it as three, it won't let me go with three. You need to have your four digits. Okay, the next control is a sign check. And guys, this is nice because this happens to go with whenever you are discussing a number. Because a number would always need to have a positive or a negative. And so when you say there's a field that's got numbers, you can always discuss a sign. Should it be a positive number? Should it be a negative number? Is it adding or subtracting? If it is even in a sum, without the sum is fine because the number still would have to be a positive or a negative. Okay, so a nice one. Let's have a look there. So the example of the size check, there is your postal address, four digits. If I try to adjust that, I can't because we have four digits postal address. A sign check. So I'm going to put in a item and look, here's a discount. So I'm going to try and put a negative discount. Now remember, the discount is going to be subtracted. So if I put a negative, I'm actually saying two negatives, so it's going to add the amount. So I say negative 10% and it won't allow me. It goes back to zero because you have to put a positive. So I put now positive 10% discount and there it is. A sign check where you're putting in a number and it has to be a specific sign. When you put the incorrect sign, it doesn't allow you. So next is alphanumerical. So wherever you have to put a letter, you need to put letters. And wherever you have to put numbers, you have to put numbers. Okay, so guys, whenever you see there's a field that has either letters or numbers or both, you can use an alphanumerical control. So example, quantity has to be a number. A customer name has to be a letter. And so I can put alphanumerical because I know there's a set character. And so if we look above, we had three letters and three digits for the customer number. 
I cannot add alphanumerical because they have to be three letters first followed by three digits. So let's go have a look at quantity in an invoice to show alphanumerical. So I'll do the alphanumerical with the quantity. Like I said, there's a quantity let number one. I'm going to try and put a letter P, a letter O, a letter Y. I'm typing all the letters. It's not allowing me. As soon as I put a number, it allows me. So alphanumerical. Okay, if there was a place where I had to put a letter and I tried to put a number, it wouldn't allow me. Okay, guys, also just want to show you, remember when I select it here, if I choose to change everything, look how our description gets changed, the excluded price amount gets changed, we've got minimum entry pulling from the master file. A validation check. A validation check is just where the computer will validate what's been input to the details that are in the master file. So guys, very similar to a minimum entry where the minimum entry goes and pulls information from the master file. Here, it doesn't necessarily pull it and input the details, it just makes the connection, reconciles to the master file and if it doesn't, there'll be a prompt to say there's an error that's been input because this doesn't match to the master file. Okay. A reasonability checks what you have entered to the trends or the norm from that customer or from that wage employee. So basically what we're saying is how many hours did that wage employee work this week? What does he normally work on a weekly basis? Does that seem reasonable? How much stock does that customer generally purchase from us? What did they purchase now? Does that seem reasonable? Um, the How many... How much do we normally purchase from the supplier? What's the purchase now? Does it seem reasonable? So just as a check as to the trends or the norm for whatever it is we are entering in. Okay, a limit check is a maximum or a minimum criteria. So you're putting something in above the limit that's set for this customer. It shouldn't be allowed. Another place for limits may be how much stock do you actually have on hand? What is the customer trying to purchase? Are they trying to purchase in excess of what's on hand? There's a limit. We can only sell what's on hand currently. Okay, so wherever they can set a maximum or a minimum criteria, and then it's trying to go over the maximum or go under the minimum. So I will show you this with a credit limit for the customer. So the credit limit set for this customer is 20,000. So I want to try and purchase in excess of that to see if the limit checks works. So let me put 30 quantity here. I get 28,000 here. So that means it's over the credit limit. I say let's save this. It says to me, your credit limit will be exceeded. Do you want to continue? So the limit check has worked. This here showing me that the limit check has worked is the prompt. A range check is now where we have a maximum and a minimum, so it has to be between the two. So a nice example of where a range could also work is also with regards to your quantities. If you can only sell an item in its full capacity, then you could have a range between one and what's on hand. So one being your minimum and the maximum being what's on hand. If you have got a discount percentage that you allow and it's between 10 and 20 percent, then the discount for a customer must be between 10 and 20. It can't go above 20 and below 10. Okay, so wherever there is an ability for them to set a max and a min criteria, we have a range as opposed to the limit where it is a maximum only or a minimum only. So guys, for the range, I said we could normally work with quantity. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a problem here because we don't have a maximum quantity because it's a service as opposed to physical items. But what I can show you is if there was a max and a min, then it would work here. So quantity, a minimum is one. So if I try and put 0.5, it won't allow me. So that's the minimum element of it. If we had a maximum, if I went above it, it wouldn't allow me to show you the range. 
missing data, a field that needs to be completed. So we've already done a field that needs to be completed in our screen aids, which was mandatory field. The difference between the two, in your screen aids, look above here, guys. We said the mandatory field had an asterisk that said, you must complete this field. And it showed you on the screen versus this missing data. There's nothing on the screen to say you must, but as soon as you try to go past without completing it, it tells you you cannot move on. So the example when I showed you the mandatory field earlier and I said I tried to continue without putting any details in the invoice and a prompt came up to say no, you need to put certain fields, that was actually your example of the missing data. And I said to you there's no asterisk to show you, so it wasn't the mandatory field, but now you see how the two work together. They're the same function, the difference being that a screen aid shows you on the screen, missing data doesn't, but as soon as you don't complete it, it lets you know. And then finally, sequence checks. So, all source documents must be in a sequence, so they must follow on from the previous. So this is our pre-numbering. And then the computer can run its own checks to identify missing documents. So I'm going to show you on the screen that there is a number assigned to the document that cannot be manipul manipulated, so it's pre-numbered. And then that the system will then be able to run a sequence check and make sure that the next invoice follows on from the previous. Okay. And our sequencing. I cannot change this document number. I can try. It won't let me backspace type a number. Everything I'm doing, it won't change. It's pre-numbered. If I go back and see the previous document number, it should be 5134. So let's go have a look. five one three four and all of them follow in numerical order.